Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. This is episode 446 of the Ping Pong Flick Show. And what, what a day it has been for the Snyder Cut movement. This is all Snyder Cut related today. Yes, there is maybe some things on the Variety Report that came out today. But I want to add that all of this, almost all of this is regurgitated stuff we've been hearing for a while now and i think i've even reported on some of this stuff like like the birds of prey and suicide squad is gonna be rated r uh michael b jordan had a meeting about superman things like that um but for the most part a lot of this thing even the jj abrams uh think about uh, you know discussing about superman uh that i've talked about as well there is a lot of just kissing hamada and emmerich's butts in this one for some reason or the other uh and then it, it's just a it's just a mess of things like uh, the Jeff Johns Green Lantern still there. It's like, what? And it, it's just just a bunch of different uh, news articles and news insider news and, and different types just putting together, just trying to fill up this entire article, an article that really what it really wanted to do was to put down the Snyder Cut. Yeah. That's all it really wanted to do. Now, I do want to add that there's probably one thing in here that's really interesting, and that is DC's future won't unfold entirely on the big screen. HBO Max, Warner Media's upcoming streaming service, is currently looking for DC properties that could inspire films to premiere on its own platform. It hopes to make DC adventures that have slightly lower budgets, requiring them to rely on up-and-coming actors and not established stars, with goal of keeping production costs under $65 million. So that kind of means that uh, if they were going to put out something on HBO Max, the budget there is $65 million, which is interesting because uh, Grace Randolph did say that Green Lantern TV series is going to be about $100 million. So maybe it's around that line as well, somewhere around there, maybe less than $100 million. But for in this article, it's $65 million. So Potentially anything that Warner Brothers wants to put out or fund or finance, it would have to come in around that budget in order to be a viable thing for HBO Max to put on. So I thought that was kind of interesting uh, uh, to, to hear about that. So it's not it's a lower budget than an actual giant blockbuster movie, uh, but it, it's still around the range where you can have something decent uh, on HBO Max. So uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. But the thing that really kind of just really really got on people's nerves here is that this article on this last paragraph which is what I we really believe they were trying to put out is this logistically however there's little appetite at the studio for spending the millions of dollars it would require to finish visual effects and editing work on Snyder's version particularly as Justice League was a commercial disaster there are currently no plans to release the Snyder version either in theaters or or on HBO Max. That's a pipe dream, said one knowledgeable insider. There's no way it's ever happening. Where did I, where do we hear that before? Where have we heard that before? A pipe dream. No way it's ever happening. Well, Umberto Gonzalez actually used to say that. He used to say that Snyder Cut was a pipe dream. Uh, we've also heard that it sounds very familiar to like the Ben Fritz article, except in that one, at least it said an exec, an unnamed exec said uh, that doesn't exist. It's a fantasy, whatever. This one's even worse, guys. A, a knowledgeable insider. <laughs> Who? The janitor? Like, I mean, seriously, what are you talking about? A knowledgeable insider. What? It, it, and I can't believe uh, people like Justin Kroll, who was from Variety, uh, and Brett Lang would actually pull this out. Unless, unless this was a Warner Brothers exec, perhaps maybe even Toby Emmerich, in his last-ditch effort to try to see if he can keep the Snyder Cut from happening this desperate desperate attempt douchey attempt to get it from happening oh it's happening variety i'm sorry you'll see as in the words of henry cavill you'll see it is definitely happening i can't believe variety has turned into we got this covered 
I can't believe they turned into a nonsense site. Uh, I mean, at this point, the Hall Reporter is probably going to uh, bust out a real true story at this point. But we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens with that. But we're, you know, the fans are not the only ones to call them out, you know, apparently. <laughs> so this this headline here, and they even put it out, Warner Bros. currently has no plans to release a Snyder Cut Just League either in theaters or on HBO Max. That's a pipe dream. There's no way it's ever happening. A uh, very, you know, a knowledgeable insider. Warner Brothers did not comment, by the way. Just letting you know. And it seems like Grace Randolph also agrees uh, with the fandom, look, it's obvious Snyder Cut would be on HBO Max, which launches May 2020. Keep it that in mind Any regarding any announcements. Warner Brothers does not want to peak too early, and there's no immediate rush. This is a Disney, Sony, Spider-Man all over again with clickbait stories. Hashtag release the Cut. Well, thank you, Grace. She also said this. There's absolutely no new information in this story. And some of it is even incorrect, like the, quite frankly, insulting and needlessly aggressive Snyder Cut comments I will not cover. So, the, and she's right. There was a lot of no new information, except that it was almost like it was just trying to embody the, the article with that one new thing on the bottom from some unknown, knowledgeable insider that says... Uh, that the Snyder Cut's a pipe dream, right? So, it, but it did rile up the fans, but I'll, I'll get there in a minute. I'll get there in a minute. Mark Hughes, I see he was like sensing something. <laughs> he decided to put out this article today. Now, Mark Hughes used to be a Snyder Cut denier. He really did until, you know, he started working with Jay Oliva and probably came on to a lot more new information, which he'll explain here. This one... I'll read most of, not that BS bullshit variety. And yes, I did swear on this because this video is not for kids. Dear Warner Brothers, release the Snyder Cut, says Mark Hughes. After a sustained campaign to convince Warner Brothers to release Zack Snyder's version of Justice League, support for the movement is reaching new heights. Last week, a parade of high-profile filmmakers and performers called on the studio to release the Snyder Cut, while the hashtag, hashtag release the Snyder Cut, generated hundreds of thousands of tweets and retweets, with new leadership taking over Warner at AT&T, shores of plans for the company, with the streaming service HBO Max debut next May. And with a version of Justice League just sitting on a shelf, unseen by the public, the time has come for Warner Brothers to release the Snyder Cut. First, let's be clear about a few things. Yes, a Snyder Cut does exist in a near-finished form. Yes, several people have seen the Snyder Cut. Yes, there were multiple edits of the film, including an early assembly cut, but Snyder and his crew continued working on the film and created a more completed version. And yes, some of the fans who want to see the Snyder Cut have engaged in bad behavior, but that's a separate issue unrelated to whether the Snyder Cut exists and whether it should be released, and nobody should oppose the release of Snyder's vision simply based on disliking how some of the fans behave. It's also worth noting that there was indeed a sustained campaign to convince everyone that no Snyder Cut uh, exists, just like the Wall Street Journal's Ben Fritz, with some people intentionally spreading false information to mislead the press and public like what is happening today, while others spread the false information because they were misled by their bosses or sources and had no other evidence at the time to convince them otherwise. I am not sure what compels some media and journalists to continue denying the Snyder Cut exists after a great deal of confirmation nor why some of them insist it would require twin tens of millions of dollars to complete Snyder's version. It wouldn't, and those claims seem based on the outlet journalists falsely believing only the assembly cut exists. While Warner could indeed spend some additional money to finish a few elements or tweak a few others, Snyder's version could be re released as is without additional spending and viewers would get the full film with 90 plus percent completed footage. VFX and sound 
Now, I'm going to move over a little bit further as he kind of talks about uh, a little bit about uh, different uh, conspiracies, uh, how about uh, n the narrative that the Kai Snyder Cut exists, his own opinions in terms of that, uh, the, you know, the completion, uh, how, how it was completed and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm going to move down a little bit more as... And anyway, the timing for release of Snyder Cut is about to be perfect, or relatively perfect, since the perfect timing would have been the original theatrical window, but this is about moving forward in the best possible way now. I've said for quite a while now that HBO Max would benefit from exclusively streaming Snyder's version of Justice League, providing content not available anywhere else and appealing to a sizable audience who would subscribe to HBO Max just to gain access to the Snyder Cut. Incoming Warner CEO and Sarnoff could use this as an olive branch to fans who have been upset by the previous studio leadership and as an olive branch to Zack Snyder himself as well. And this is a no-lose scenario for Warner now since they reap benefits from the release while any negative sentiment would fall upon the past administration it's almost like saying if the new administration well wants to be uh, held with the highest praise it would be best to distance yourselves from the old administration especially the ones that had uh, tried to uh you know kill the movement with this variety article today just saying just saying but if Snyder's cut is indeed superior to the theatrical cut of Justice League, then it not only deserves to be seen, but also would generate positive coverage and happiness among Warner DC fans, and it would provide the closure for the previous iteration of the that DCE world. It would also generate revenue on DVD, Blu-ray, digital HD after an initial HBO release. Heck, Warners could even do a one weekend only theatrical release in a few cities to create additional promotional coverage and revenue if the HBO Max release goes well enough. Hello, I like to add, I hope they go worldwide uh theatrical if you know what i mean this definitely needs to be seen uh it definitely needs to be seen um everywhere absolutely everywhere but the snyder cut would perfectly fit into the launch of hbo max hbo max is a bring is bringing a larger more definitive Warner Brothers content library of viewers is going to offer lots of other past superhero movies from different eras, different incarnations of characters. If those films aren't problematic for the future of DC movies, then the Snyder Cut isn't a problem either. The bottom line is this. The Snyder Cut deserves to be seen, and releasing it is the right thing to do. I hope AT&T and Warner Brothers realize this and decide to release the Snyder Cut since HBO Max provides a way to do so that would make just about everyone happy and offer plenty of upside for the studio and their streaming service. And if that wasn't enough, and you know, it's not. The Snyder Cut fandom did uh, outpour and they really uh, went after Variety. They went after Warner Brothers in a way uh, and actually tweeted like crazy. Uh, and as if Zack Snyder knew what was going on, which I did, I do indeed know that he, he really does know what's going on, had put this out uh, shortly thereafter. Trinity Tuesday. And here we have it. We actually see Batman, tactical suit Batman with the goggles, Superman looking at him, Wonder Woman right next to him, the Trinity. Uh, they're standing there possibly at the end of Justice League when, it was, uh, uh, when they finally won the battle and stuff. What is he saying to him? I don't know. I, I don't know if he says... Uh, I don't know what he's saying. Uh, um, I thought you didn't like me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it... it it is a interesting scene. Uh, I wish we get to see this. It, it, I wonder what their actual interaction was during that point. Uh, that was probably different than what we got in uh, Joss Whedon's version. Uh, and I would really have loved to see that the Trinity right there. Uh, but that wasn't enough. Zach, that that wasn't enough for Zach. Cause Zach needed to kind of just kill that variety article you know you can tell he needed this to kill to variety article and, and and when he's busy editing army of the dead as he did say later on um 
he decided just to come out with a whole slew of viral posts today. This guy is awesome in the movie. It's Vocal. Willem Dafoe as Vocal. So, and you can really tell. Just looking at this, this is not the ending of the movie where he tries to get uh, uh, Jason Momoa. He was in the movie even more than that. And he's in his armored suit. His hair looks wet. Not really sure what the background is right now. There is a little bit more context later on. But uh, absolutely, uh, like the lighting and everything, the way it looks, it's beautiful. I mean, I just can't believe they would cut this scene out. Uh, and as I promised, a little more context. And he even says this, a little context. It's vocal looking up at Jason Moore as Arthur Curry uh, and what looks like it's possibly and probably as we learn a little bit more this is the air bubble that he was talking about the air bubble where they get to communicate with each other without uh, in the water now we do see him here uh, we actually do see the Quindant as well perhaps Vocal gives him the Quindant gives uh, you know Arthur the Quindant and possibly and later on uh, revealed that Zach revealed that he also gives him the armor in this scene so maybe this is probably after the Mara and Arthur conversation uh, if that even happened who knows uh, and uh, actually got to the point where he said he needs the armor and the Quindant to fight uh, Steppenwolf as well and you can see a lot of the VFX CGI was pretty much was done for this particular scene uh, you see a lot of sea life here you see the air bubble opening up here and and he really had that in mind it's kind of funny because Zack Snyder I don't know if I had the queued up but Zack Snyder did mention about the air bubble that he could not figure out a way for them to talk uh, because it would be squeaks because it's underwater so he thought it through scientifically how it would be impossible to talk in the water um, now there are some artistic things that uh, you know James Wan took uh, uh, put in in order to make it much flow much better and that's fine but for an, uh, in Justice League he had to use the air bubble which is also fine as well it actually shows you that he was trying to make sense of how they would be able to uh, talk underwater uh, through a scientific way and uh, and he couldn't figure out that out at that time he didn't have time so he just did the air bubble instead which actually in Aquaman they kind of you know revealed that the air bubble so no one else can hear so he kind of kept that element inside the movie as well but moving forward, that was not it. That was not it. He decided to go. Like I said, Zack snapped today. He, he just snapped today. He decided to reveal another image of vocal. This time with Mara. Oh, a little bit more body armor or a shawl or a or whatever, you know, and there's some people in the background. This looks like, like some have said, uh, it. this was going to be like a Lord of the Rings. I think Stephen Colbert has said, Lord of the Rings uh, meets the DC films, right? DCEU. And we could, we actually saw a lot of that, you know, different, uh, you know, we got the Amaz Amazonians, uh, we have the, the Atlanteans, then we have the human race, we would have the history battle, uh, and each each race was like getting giving their own um giving up their own hero for instance like uh, their hero is uh, aquaman and amazons had wonder woman and the humans had you know batman and you know i guess you know it, and it and everybody had a play in this and all these uh, heroes come together to fight for a common cause and that's what it would have been unite the league right uh and, and it's like almost uniting the you know, this is the fellowship you know every uh every representative of every race is going to fight the battle so that's what we could have got that that incredible epic fantasy uh just uh, uh, you know i mean it's just, oh, i we, we're gonna got crazy stuff i mean i don't even have words right now it's just uh, i'm like half pissed off to add variety and i'm half cheering this on I'm, I'm half feeling the frustration zach probably has right now because uh you know people are, are freaking out over the variety which i'm telling you not to freak out uh and because and he's literally trying to calm everybody down get everybody hyped up again and it, it 
And for the most part, I think it really worked. It, and I do. It's pretty much Zach telling F you to the variety, right? Uh, and, and it's a lot of us telling uh, F you to variety as well. But it doesn't end there. It really doesn't. I mean, Zach Snyder, last one for today, decides to put this one out. Last one of the day. Love the bat goggles um, because uh, I don't have the image queued up. But if you go back from the movie, uh, Batman is jumping into that centrifuge. Uh, is that what it's called? Centrifuge? Whatever that, that tower, that round tower. Uh, so they, they took him out. They put him in uh, that tower. And uh, Whedon took off the goggles as well. So... This is the real shot of Batman jumping down. What was he jumping down from? Who knows? Uh, they took this scene where it was supposed to be and put it in context for another uh, area of the movie. Uh, and that's why the, the final battle is so interesting. Like the final battle uh, is so chopped up. It's so messed with the color grading, uh, the way things are placed, where Superman's interplaced, where Batman doesn't have his goggles, and all this stuff. You know, like it's a diff different movie and how much can we can we have to keep saying to people it's a different movie it's a different movie it exists uh you know it, it's uh, it's ready and it's i don't know why do we have to keep banging people's heads over this for for uh the Snyder Cut deniers and stuff. But, um, you know, Zach's going to continue fueling us, and he knows. He's there. He's he's seeing what we're doing. Uh, and for the most part, we did good. <laughs> we did good. We trended at 55.1 thousand tweets today. Uh, I think it even went more than that. Uh, this is where I just captured it right now. But 55,000 tweets today on an unplanned event. It was just... It just really uh, got people hyped up. It just got people just like, we got to get together. We got to do the Snyder Cut. You know, we got to get it trending. You know, we we, and we had a lot of people in the fandom, including uh, at RT Snyder Cut, uh, at SnyderCut.com, and all these different, uh, you know, individuals and sites. Um, Tweeting about release of Snyder Cut helped us get to this point. Uh, and we're, it's literally us. Just telling Warner Brothers we're not backing down. Whatever you pull, it's just going to make us stronger. How can you not see that by now? And for people who don't have much hope, you know, uh, someone, Sammy, asked, asked at Zack Snyder, is there still hope? And Zack Snyder says, always have hope. So there you go. Always have hope. And you want you want some more? Um, say something. I am losing hope. Don't. Zack Snyder is saying don't. Don't lose hope at all. And that's what I'm saying. Like, don't lose hope. Don't don't think this variety article uh, is it no it's not an official thing from Warner Brothers. Somebody over there is trying to see their last ditch effort to try to get this Snyder Cut from releasing for some reason for some reason but it's not working because it's gonna happen it's gonna happen we gotta keep hyping up the release of Snyder Cut uh, and uh, it's gonna eventually happen and Zack Snyder is there is there every day to back us up at this point uh, he is just gonna fight it he is just, he's, there's a new kind of mean in him. He's hunting and he's angry. <laughs> uh, and it says right here that when um, James Imperius Lex, he put out this uh, Justice League, he commented this effing movie. Uh, McD go, you know, McD talks a little bit about the blue and all the later promos where it's supposed to be black, gray, Zack Snyder. To this post says, this movie never came out. McD. You know it never came out. So uh, let's not <laughs> go into the old Justice League. There was this movie. It's going to come out. The Zack Snyder's version of Justice League is going to come out. It will. It definitely will. Uh, and then we'll just have to keep these minor speed bumps, these little... You know, douchey execs or whoever, insider source or whatever that are trying to spread disinformation, trying to spread lies, trying to spread, uh, you know, trying to be like the Debbie Downer. You're trying to tell everybody that's not happening. It's a pipe dream, pipe dream, um, but it's happening. 
I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're going down. If that's the boat you want to go down in, then, well, good luck with you, Variety. Because you know what? Fuck Variety. With a smiley face. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Release the Snyder Cut!